our livelihoods are very much intertwined with the concept of our environment and how exactly the quality of our environments is affecting that very aspect of livelihood. In today's conversation, or rather in today's debate, we have Light Academy versus Duggarity High School, and the debate of the day is poverty should be a secondary concern to the degradation of the environment, and I read the motion again, poverty should be a secondary concern to the degradation to the degradation of the environment, and all the best to both teams. Team proposition, first speaker, you have three minutes. The name is Vandel Lucas. The school is Dagoretti High School, and my mission is to speak sense into some of you. First off, let us begin with a little bit of definition of the point. Of the, of the point. First off, what is poverty? Poverty is the state of being poor, Secondly, what is degradation? According to the Oxford Dictionary, it is defined as pro the process of something being damaged or even worse. Third, what is the environment? The environment is the natural world in which people and plants live, me, you, and everything inside of it. So let me enlighten you on how poverty and the environment are intertwined. First off, flying toilets. What are flying toilets? They are not flying lavatories. They're not fl lavatories floating around. What do you think they are? They're something that I'd rather not see. But they're a human waste put in a bag and thrown outside in the open. Where is this scene? Let me give you a case study. Dharavi, India. In India, the, in Dharavi, India, the laboratories are limited. In 2006, a humanitarian development report by the UN estimated an average of one toilet per 1,440 residents. What is 1,140 in Kenya? That is the estimated number of students in an uh, extra county school. So by that fact only, we get to see that poverty Poverty, in short, is a, a secondary concern to the degradation of the environment. Secondly, Daravi reminds me, let me get back home, Kibra slums. I have seen Kibra slums. I have stayed around Kibra slums. I see Kibra slums on, let's say, a daily basis. Kibra slums are connected to Daravi. How? Kibra slums and Daravi have one common factor, the river. The Nairobi River passes through Kibra slums, and the Creek River also in Daravi has the same characteristics. What are the characteristics? Fact, the impassable, which they were in the past. Second, they're very nasty to look at. And third, they have a stench which is fetid. So, what is, how is Kibra connected to Daravi again? Kibra is the largest slum in Africa. Daravi is the largest slum in the world. Kibra is the third, is, is the third largest slum in the world, and this can be seen how. So both Daravi and Kibra have that in common, and it is seen that, isn't it seen that poverty in Kibra has cost has caused the Ravi slum, has co the poverty in Kibra has caused the problems that we get to see. Third, I want to conclude by giving us a solution. What solution do we have? Sustainable development, two words. Sustainable development how? Renewable, renewable energy development. Renewable de energy development in what way? Coal. Coal is gotten from cutting trees, but it can also be got, get, gotten from from cow dung. And this has been seen and has been used worldwide. So join me and let's hold hands to propose the motion that states poverty should be a secondary concern, the degradation of the environment. I know that, that my proposition might seem to, uh, might seem to understand, uh, I know that my proposition, thank you. Re they remember, remember cheap is expensive and expensive is cheap. Thank you. Team opposition, first speaker, you have three minutes. Thank you, Madam Speaker, for giving me such a golden opportunity to strongly oppose the motion that states poverty should be a secondary concern to the degradation of the environment. Now, my name is Gerald Mutsoto from Light Academy, and uh, 
Bef uh, for this debate, I shall give the parameters. I, as the first speaker, will bring out the status quo, the definitions, and uh, one point. My second speaker, Fuad Abdi Razak, will give out the, other, the remaining points and do some rebuttals. And my third speaker, Melvin Kabuchi, will give out uh, rebuttals and do a summary. Now, <coughs> I would like to start with a rebuttal. The first proposing speaker came up and gave us problems that arise from poverty that affect environmental degradation. I, I beg to ask, doesn't this support our case on poverty, on opposing the motion that poverty should be a secondary concern to the environment? Because he comes here and tells us the problems, then gives a vague solution. I think poverty should be a primary concern. Now, before I get more into that, let me give out the definitions. What is poverty? Poverty is the state of being extremely poor, lacking sufficient financial resources or basic necessities to meet one's needs and pa participate fully in society. Environmental degradation, this is the deterioration of natural environments through various processes such as pollution, climate change, and deforestation. Now, what is the status quo? Poverty is one of the main leading causes of environmental degradation. Such harmful practices to the environment, like burning of plastic bags for worms, uh, cause emission of harmful gases that will consequently lead to a rise of respiratory diseases and ultimately premature death. Um, now, on to my first point. Putting poverty as a secondary concern may lead to the destruction of forests which consequently contributes to degrad degradation of the environment. But how? Poverty will increase e encroachment into forests as homeless people, or let's say the destitute, will come looking for shelter or land that they could use. This in turn uh, causes deforestation, which ultimately uh, contributes to <coughs> Uh, climate change, which is bad for our environment. Now, let's consider the Mao, and f the Mao forest encroachment. A fight over the forest in March 21st, 2019, revealed the, the extent damage on the forest, which was once Kenya's largest closed co canopy forest ecosystem, courtesy of the Star newspaper. This ultimately leads to deforestation of uh, trees, which leads to destruction of forests, and, and therefore we can't get wood that you can sell and get money f from the government. And this ultimately leads to an overall terrible environment. Thank you. Team proposition, you have three minutes. I propose the motion that states, poverty is a secondary concern to the degradation of the environment. My names are Eric Mungai from the Giants of Africa, Dagoretti High School. Um, you stood here and spoke about the motion. I'm not sure you're well conversant with it. Um, you have said that you have talked about respiratory diseases, but have you asked yourself who smokes? Who takes, this, who takes these drugs and uses them? The, the rich have come up and they have set industries that can be used in a recreational way. For example, tobacco industries that can be used to that have been used to produce that have been used to produce tobacco and it's smoked to a certain level and there are rules and regulations set for it not to disintegrate the environment but if you look at the poor every dick and hairy they are searching their way to find the smallest amount of money that they can get to smoke and they are not only smoking and they are not only using drugs but they are abusing drugs to the extent that it has caused environmental degradation in the place of air pollution. My fellow colleague here stated that cheap is expensive and expensive is cheap. I'll, I'll elaborate. Gas, gas, electric stoves and charcoal, charcoal wood. Charcoal wood is cheap, but what does it do to the environment? Once used by mostly the poor as such, what does it do to the environment? There are harmful gases emitted which has increased the rate of carbon, the concentration of carbon-4 oxide in the environment, which has made global warming a harmful effect and an increasing evidential paraspatory, as shown in the 2018 case study posed by Muturi Mwangi. But electric stove, which are used by the rich, 
as the proposers here, they do not emit these gases and is conservative to the environment. Hence, that is why I propose the motion that the motion that poverty is a secondary concern to the degradation of the environment. Another thing is that recycling industries are owned by the people who have an upstake of themselves. What does this mean? People with money have set up industries such as Coman Da Vinci in 2015 in the Middle East, East set up a company that deals with the recyclement of plastic in all the Middle East countries. This has reduced the rate of air pollution by 13%, the rate of land pollution by 9%, and as of now, the Middle East is the second, is the second most continent, is the second area with the lowest percentage of land of air pollution and land degradation. In conclusion, I'd like to state that just, as I've, just like this paper, I have not only crushed my opponents, but I'll also give them mine to recycle. Team opposition, second speaker, you have three minutes. My name is Fuad Abdurizak, and I'm here as the second speaker for the proposition, uh, for the opposition to strongly and vehemently deny the motion that states that poverty should be a secondary concern to the degradation of the environment. Now, before I say anything, I have to begin with some rebuttals to both speakers of the proposition. Uh, so the first speaker, exactly, you're very right. Congratulations for whatever you've said. Because the poverty in Kibra does affect environmental degradation, which is exactly what the opposition is saying. So, as opposition, we're here to say that, the pro that poverty is a primary concern which is what you've illustrated very well with your examples of Kibra and India. So, therefore, even without my glasses or with them, I don't understand the sense and can't see the sense and the points uh, that you've made in regards to your side's arguments. So I'd like you to make sense of what you're saying in regards to your side. Uh, in the case of the second speaker, my colleague, first of all, never talked about drugs, so I don't know where you took that from. Second of all, Disregarding that lapse maybe that you've had, my points, or your points, have not combated the fact that even if, for example, cigarettes or drugs, like you've said, uh, do affect the environment, is it really inferior to what poverty does and its many effects, including uh, what I'm about to explain in my points? With all this said, you're just suggesting that the points are directly interfering with your stance's opposition, because, or your stance's proposition, because they do, what we're supposed to do. So, again, facts. So, as I move to my points as second speaker, the first one, solving poverty is a prerequisite to solving environmental degradation. Why? Let me explain. This is why the interconnectedness of poverty and environmental degradation is important. Poverty is often both a cause and a consequence of environmental degradation. Poverty can lead to unsustainable practices like using of cheap fertilizers, which can kill the soils and damage the vegetation and aquatic life of the, of the farmland. And this really, this very affects, this ex affects environmental degradation extremely. However, environmental degradation, such as deforestation or land degradation, can also exacerbate poverty by reducing access to resources and livelihood. Addressing poverty together with, with environmental degradation is necessary, it is absolutely necessary to achieve sustainable development for the country by lifting communities out of poverty and providing access to basic necessities. By doing so, we can create conditions that support sustainable practices and environmentally friendly technologies. Now on to my second point. The long-term impact of not solving poverty together with environmental degradation is more poverty and more environmental degradation. Why? Poverty traps. Poverty traps can create a cycle of vulnerability. And addressing poverty after environmental degradation is, it is, is, de is detrimental for achieving sustainable development. Therefore, in my case sustained, I decide to oppose the fact that, that poverty should be a secondary concern to the degradation of the environment. It should be the primary concern. Thank you. Team 
proposition have been tasked with the question of can they justify the claims or the correlation between drugs and substance abuse to poverty and the motion at hand today. And team oppositions have been tasked to validate the claims that since poverty is the main focus that they are um, focusing on in this motion, can they give solutions to environmental degradation? <laughs> team proposition, third speaker, you have three minutes. First of all, Cheap is indeed expensive. <laughs> I am Nathaniel Ngugi from the Giants of Africa, Dagoretti High School. Now, on my first point, or rather, wait, let me just rewind a bit. You said that, or let me answer the question first. You asked that uh, whether smoking was something, something. Smoking is indeed in both sides, but where is it more? I think you'll find that the rich barely have time to smoke because they're too busy making money, but the poor, not that I'm saying they're at fault, but they do indeed take it more. If you beg to differ, please let me know. Now, my colleague over here stated that he denies <laughs> the motion. You're clearly denying more than the motion. You're denying the truth. And the truth is that poverty is indeed a cause of environmental degradation. They seem not to have understood the motion, but basically what it's saying is poverty is a cause of environmental degradation. I stand here proposing the motion because of various reasons stated by my colleagues over here. But I would like to add a few more. If, let's say, I give you a hypothetical situation. We prioritize the environment and then ignore the other catastrophes that might come later. Let's say, uh, case scenario. I have a place where, like he said, there are no toilets. It rains. The toilets overflow. I could use the money to build more toilets or I could use the money to clean up the environment. Which one would be more effective? Cleaning. Cleaning? I think not. It would be building more toilets. Or maybe even take it a step further. Make the toilets plus add, let's say, proper plumbing systems. Do you think that if it rains, all that muck will overflow and fill the area, ruin the environment? I think not. So basically what I'm saying is there seems to be an interdependence between poverty and environmental degradation. The more the poverty, the more the environmental degradation, meaning if I reduce the poverty, it will in turn reduce the environmental degradation. If, for example, a poor man living in, with uh, two wives Two wives, it can happen, polygamy <laughs> exists in this world as we know. So living with two wives and um, four children, four children. Living with two wives and four children, what do you think he'll consider more? What he'll eat or what he'll throw away? Ponder on that, food for thought. Thank you. Team position, third speaker, you have three minutes. Um, I'd like to give a round of applause to our proposing tide because they have genuinely given us all the points we needed. Uh, the third speaker told us about how the, there is environmental degradation, you reduce poverty, you reduce environmental degradation. Exactly, that's what we're saying. If you reduce poverty, you reduce environmental degradation. Why? They are going out of topic and joining our side because the topic, the motion of the day is poverty should be a secondary concern to the degradation of the environment. What does this mean? On our side of the bench, we're saying that poverty should be a primary concern. Why is this? Because it is the major, major reason why environmental degradation exists. Have you ever been to a slum? Have you ever seen how those people suffer? Have you ever seen the, the river? Or for example, in the Kibra he's talking about, there's one very dirty river, a river that, dis a disgusting river where sewers from the Kibera slum pour their water, where sewers from the, 
uh, everywhere. They just come there. Imagine if we solved the problem in Kibra. Imagine if we solved the poverty in Kibra, fixed those uh, toilets they're talking about. Exactly. If we fix those toilets, we are reducing poverty. Because if the toilets weren't there, uh, and we increase them, we are reducing the poverty of the toilets not being there. Uh, poverty means a uh, lack of something, lack of something vital. So if you increase the toilets, they're so saying, uh, you're, joy you're showing us that reducing poverty is the way to reduce environmental degradation. Uh, I'm going to summarize on what the, uh, our side has said. Uh, our second speaker has talked about uh, solving uh, poverty is a prerequisite to solving environmental degradation. To build on his points, we acknowledge that poverty has side effects which will lead to environmental degradation. Poverty deprives the society of good sewerage systems. Some sewers will be drained into rivers which will, redul which will reduce the water pollution and environmental degradation. Um, what do I mean? Uh, if the sewers are cleaned up, if uh, we block the sewers from reaching the rivers, we won't have to deal with the problem of environmental degradation because we have prevented it. My friends, remember that prevention is better than cure. In our world, we want to show you that we can prevent this environmental degradation by stopping the poverty first. If we stop the poverty, these people won't reach the forest to go and encroach them. They won't go to those forests, they won't cut down those trees, then later come to complain about climate change, come to complain about carbon emissions. No, because what? We have solved poverty. We have helped them. We have given them an arena in a way that they can express themselves, they can manage themselves in a way that they don't have to look for secondary means or ways that uh, do not align with what they're supposed to do. So, my take to you is, the solutions for environmental degradation must be practical, not superficial, as what they have told us. The fight against poverty is central to the fight against environmental degradation. I rest my case. Team Proposition, you have one minute to make your closing remarks. Dear Team Opposition, did you get to understand the motion clearly? It seems that there's no light shed on you, even though you are a light academy, but I am here to shed light on you. First off, remind me of the motion. Let me take her back. Poverty should be a secondary concern to the degradation of the environment. What does this mean? That, po that poverty actually and the poor people are the cause of environmental degradation. Actually, my opponents over here are giving me an easy task. First off, I am sure that you've had the points, you've had our points too. So finding a rebuttal is pretty not easy after you're helping us again and again and again. So I know that I might seem as an enigma to some of y'all, but remember, knowledge in some facts is not for the easy and simple-minded. This is the great high school, and remember, cheap is expensive and expensive really is cheap. Thank you very much. Team Opposition, you have one minute to make your closing remarks. Uh, and my time starts now. Now, to answer the question asked by uh, the audience, uh, the solution to this, uh, to poverty as a primary concern is government policies that favor the destitute. And to side proposition, yes, Yes, we did understand the motion. In fact, the third, sp the, sec the third speaker came up here and said the rich smoke less, but there's no statistical proof of this. Anyway, here I am again, ready to show you why said opposition has won. Not only have we given strong, backed up by evidence points, uh, we have also rebutted all their points and negated them fully. Uh, furthermore, I, uh, we have also come up with facts and figures where they've come up with none. Now, 
surely we have won. I would also like to add to the fact that debate should, should be a space where we can share our ideas safely. It shouldn't be a place where we, we disrespect each other like what side propositions have done. I hope they can reflect on that. Thank you. We start with Vandel Lucas. And, you know, you started by saying, yes, these two issues are intertwined. And then you paused there and moved flying toilets. Totally, you lost me there. I, I felt the understanding from, you know, as a, as a first speaker is to lay the foundation of you understanding the motion. Then comes Eric Mungai and charcoal and recycling. You can only do these things. You know, ideally, you, you ought to have shown how dealing with the as a proposer, how dealing with, um, should be, dealing with the environment from that angle actually helps deal with the poverty issue. So how does it go back the opposite, the same way the Light Academy was doing? How indeed does poverty, dealing with poverty, deal with environmental degradation? So I felt that Dagoretti High School there, you, you really missed that. Then Nathaniel comes later and, you know, oh, the question, you didn't catch in and they said something, something. It was something, something. This is a debate. It's televised. You ought to have captured that. And now go straight to that and then go to your points. I think I, I was a bit very confused. And then I had two wives, four children. The examples were really not hitting home. You guys still have a lot of potential to make things better. Remember, the greatest room in the world is the room for improvement. Is that okay? Yeah. Uh, then a final parting one. Please, can you avoid throwing jabs at each other like politicians on the podium? Let's attack the points in a decorum, in a way that shows some decorum. Not a, point, not a way that shows that uh, you really want to make your opponents look so inferior. This is an academic exercise. So let's check our statement. And that applies to all debaters who are going to come here. We're not going to allow a language that is aimed at making the other team look like the preparation and everything they, they did amounted to nothing. So let's kindly weigh our words. Thank you. Um, how was it for you? Uh, the debate was actually, it was fun. You know, for us, for a lot of us, or at least for us, as a Light Academy, it's, we are the juniors. So we haven't had debates as much as the other people have. We're not as experienced. But for our first or few debates, we've actually done pretty well as a, in our standards. But there's a lot of, there's a lot of room for improvement. Well, um, uh, we kind of understood the motion wrongly. But all in all, we think we were good. We had a margin of about three points, I think. And uh, I think that we have a, there's a room for more improvement. If we had more time in the debate itself, like speaking, wise, like if the time was increased from three minutes, yeah, maybe. And also the preparation time. And the judges have awarded Light Academy 61.5%. A round of applause, please, for Light Academy. And the judges have awarded Dagoeti High School 58.5%. A round of applause for Dagoeti. And the winners of this motion is Light Academy with 61.5%. Round of applause, please, for, da for Light Academy. And we have come to the end of this debate. And until next time, it is goodbye from us here at the Debate Circle. Remember to check our social media platforms for more of these forms of conversations and, the, and debates, both on YouTube, Instagram, and on Twitter. And until next time, it is goodbye from us. Mm -hmm.